Hey everybody, I am John Barker, and in this episode we're taking another look at the ATEM Mini Extreme, and specifically the Select Bus, sort of what it is and how to get the most out of it. The Select Bus is that double row of buttons right in the top centre of the ATEM Mini Extreme. You have all the sources on the top, and you have all the destinations on the bottom. The top row is pretty self-explanatory with the terms used. We have inputs 1 through 8, media player 1 and 2, colour 1 and 2, bars, and then black. To save space, the labels on the bottom row of buttons are a little more condensed together. We have key 1 luma, key 1 chroma, key 1 pattern, key 2 luma, key 2 chroma, key 2 pattern, DSK 1 and 2, DVE 1 and 2, the dip, the wipe, the logo, and then a sting button, but it doesn't seem to be implemented just yet on the A10 Mini Extreme. Let's take a walk through a pretty simple use case of using the select bus. In my case, I want to show the side-by-side picture-in-picture effect, and I want to show my two guests side-by-side. -side. So here's the program out of my ATEM Mini Extreme, and right now it's not showing anything as you can see, and that's because I have a color on Media Player 1 in program. But if I take my picture-in-picture -picture effect on air, you can see it's a side-by-side -side color. I actually have color 1 and color 2 in the DVE1 and DVE2. I can confirm that pretty quickly on the select bus. So if I choose destination DVE1, you can see that color 1 is going to that destination. Likewise, if I go to DVE2, you can see color 2 goes to that destination. Since there are so many features built into the A10 Mini Extreme, this select bus lets me reconfigure or remap any of those destinations with a different source. So I can change that now in that DVE1 and DVE2. I'll go back to DVE1 here and I'll send source 1 to DVE1. You can see instantly on the program output of my ATEM Mini Extreme that that worked as expected. I'll do the same for DVE2 and change it to source 2. And now I have my two guests showing up side by side on the program output, which works exactly the way I wanted. You can imagine during a production that you really want to change from guest 1 to guest 3 in the same little spot, and that's a perfect way to do it. Speaking of quick changes, another use case could be where I want to show a full screen presentation, and then I want to show a circle overlay of one of my speakers who's talking over that presentation. So here's my presentation full screen, and then on air I'm going to bring my speaker, and there they are in the top corner. Now what I realize is this is not the speaker who's actually doing the talking. And with the ATEM Mini Extreme, I can head into the Select Bus and quickly make that change. So here I can see Key 1, the pattern, is set to Source 1. But I can change that to Source 2, and then you can see the other speaker who's actually doing the talking. So I can see myself using this during a production, where I have two or three presenters maybe, all sharing the load of a presentation, and I can jump between them in Source 1, 2, and maybe 3 for example. I'm really excited to use this during productions where I think it'll really make it easier to just jump in really fast and make these changes right on the device itself instead of having to head into the ATEM software control which is where you had to go before if you wanted to make these changes. And one final use case to show off is whenever you go from a side-by-side -side interview to a presenter and their presentation. Earlier I showed you this layout which works really nicely whenever you have those two people talking to each other. But as soon as the person on the right wants to show their presentation, you might want to change up the person on the left, hide them away, and show the presentation in their spot instead. Luckily you can do this pretty fast right here on the select bus. So in this case, I know that DVE1 has person number one, presenter number one, but I know I have my presentation on a different source. In my case, I have it on Media Player 2, so I can switch to that. And back over on the program, you can see what it looks like when their presentation pops up. And then maybe they finish their presentation and I can bring the other person back on air pretty simply and it all works pretty seamlessly too. Being able to punch in those things really fast is just a time saver, especially during a critical show that's live and it's getting a little bit stressed. Having those buttons right at your fingertips really makes all the difference. So I hope you find that useful on the select bus. I'm sure there's plenty more things I can explore in future videos about it, and I'm sure there's other ways that you'll use it too. Do let me know in the comments below about anything you think I missed or the things that I should cover. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.